Hi beauties, Rosie here from rosiepena.com, a sewing and style blog. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here. So today's video is all about the on a top. So the on a top is one of my patterns that I released from my free spirit pattern collection, which was for the spring and summer. So the inspiration behind this top is basically just to be a staple wardrobe piece because I really just love basic pieces. There are times where I just want something that I can wear to the grocery store or, or really just a casual piece that I know will last in my closet for a really long time. So the on a top is just a really simple, it's either a crew neck top or it has a scoop neck option and it also has three sleeve variations. You can choose a long sleeve, a short sleeve, or an elbow length sleeve which is a little bit shorter than what a three quarter length sleeve would be. But you can always play around with the sleeve lengths by just um, going down on the pattern or going up depending on if you want a shorter sleeve or a longer sleeve. But I really love the on the top. It's such a just simple, like I said, a basic staple wardrobe piece that you can have in your pattern collection and you know it's something that you're going to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's the reason why I really love the on the top. Like I said, I know it's something that I can see um, building a capsule wardrobe from. It's something that I can see you know, being used over and over again in my closet. So that's the reason why I love this pattern so, so much. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make your own. It's very, very simple. If you're an absolute beginner, you can definitely sew the on a top. So if you've ever sewn our Laura dress pattern, this is very similar in construction. So the only thing with this one, since it is a little bit more fitted, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use a stretch stitch all throughout the sewing process for this one because you're gonna to have to kind of stretch it over your body. Definitely not as fitted as our Priscilla dress, which is a fitted bodycon dress. This one is not as fitted as that. So if I had to classify this, I would classify it under a semi-fitted top. But yeah, so this is the cover sheet of the pattern and let me go ahead and just jump into the instructions. So you've already seen this. This is just the first page of the pattern instructions. So then when you open it up, it has flat drawings of what each of the different variations look like. So you have the short sleeve with the crew neck and then you have a scoop neck with the elbow length sleeve and then you have the long sleeve with the scoop neck. But you can always just play around with what you feel will look best for your body shape. It's a really simple pattern. I would definitely suggest this as a beginner pattern. So then you just have the sizing chart that shows which size you should cut out based on your body measurements. And then it also tells you how much fabric you're going to need. So then the next page of the pattern instructions is just printing instructions. So it's going to tell you step by step how to print this out whenever you have it open as a PDF. This is just guiding you on how you should print out your pattern at home. But then at the bottom, there's just a little illustration showing you how everything is gonna look when you have it all taped together. So then the next page just jumps into your suggested fabrics and also your cutting layout, how you can lay out your pattern. So the great thing about this pattern is that it doesn't require very much fabric. So this is a really great stash buster pattern as well. So I've been seeing a lot lately where people will choose a different fabric for the sleeve and a different fabric for the neckband, which I think looks really cool and really awesome. So I wanna make it on a top like that pretty soon. So just play around with different fabrics and do some color blocking on the neckband and some color blocking on the sleeves. I think it's really cool when people do that. So I really want to try that out with the on a top pattern pretty soon. So then it just jumps into the illustrated pattern instructions. But like I said, this is a step-by-step -step video tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to sew your on a top. So if there's something that you're not really understanding in the pattern instructions themselves, then I think this video will be very helpful for you. Um, I know it's always a lot easier to see someone actually doing the step rather than reading the instructions on the paper. So I always like to include these videos for you guys and hopefully you find them helpful as well. The very last page of it just has a little spot for notes and then it also has um, just our social media handle. Follow us on Instagram at Rosie Pena Patterns. And whenever you sew your on the top, you can just use the hashtag RP on a top and then you can also use the hashtag Rosie Pena Patterns. That way we can see your beautiful makes and we can share them on Instagram. But that is really it for the on a top. Like I said, if you've sewn the Laura top pattern at all, then basically the same fabrics that work really well with the Laura pattern will work really well for the on the top. The fabrics like cotton jersey will work really well. You can use the ITY knit, you can use the interlock knit. So, and then in the winter time, you can choose something a little bit heavier like a Ponte knit. I think that would look really great for the winter time. So really just play around with anything that has stretch to it. I've even made a, on a top out of a stretch lace fabric. As long as the fabric has a good amount of stretch to it, then it'll work really well for the on a top pattern. I'll also mention more in the blog post of this video if you guys want any links directly to fabrics that I would choose for the on a top, then I'll have all that information linked in the blog post to the video. And also make sure you guys check the description bar below because I will have a coupon code for you guys 
if you want to purchase the on a top hat so it's going to be a coupon exclusive to my viewers here on youtube so make sure you guys check the description bar below i'll also have it pinned in the comments below as well that way you guys can get a discount on your on a top pattern I really just want to encourage sewing, so anything that can encourage you to get new patterns and try out new things, um, I think it's really great. And also these videos are super helpful, so there really is no excuse if you want to get into sewing, make sure you guys pick up a pattern and follow along with this video. That is really it for the intro of this video, I'm going to jump right into the sewing tutorial. To make your on a top, you should have your pattern pieces cut out. So you should have one back cut on the fold, one front cut on the fold two sleeve pieces and also your neck band piece. So the Ana top is constructed very similar to the Laura top. So if you've made that, then this top will be a breeze. The first step is to place your front to your back with right sides together and pin at the shoulder seams. Before you take this to your sewing machine, you want to go ahead and place your neck band piece with right sides facing and pin along the short edge. Go ahead and take your fabric to your sewing machine and you're going to sew along the pinned edges with half of an inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn your neck band piece, go ahead and press that seam open and you're going to fold it onto itself with wrong sides together. Once you've sewn the front to the back at the shoulder seams, it's time to attach our neck band. So go ahead and just open up your shirt piece with the right sides facing up and you're going to pin the neck band to the neckline of your shirt starting at the center back. So you should make a small little snip along the center fold whenever you're cutting out your pattern pieces. You want to align the seam of the neck band to the small snip at the center back of your shirt, just like you see me doing here. Want to pin the opposite side of the neck band to the center front notch. So again, from your front piece, you want to go ahead and just make a small little snip at the center front fold. So go ahead and just continue pinning your neck band along the neckline. So the neck bands on knit garments are usually made smaller than the neckline of the knit top. This is just so that whenever you attach your neck band, it snaps into place and it doesn't look very loose and lumpy. So the neck bands are always made a little bit smaller than what the neckline is. So you will have to stretch your neck band slightly to fit the neckline of your shirt. Once you've finished pinning your neck band in place, go ahead and take your fabric to your sewing machine and you want to sew along the neckline, making sure you're using a stretch stitch. So this is a knit garment, kind of close fitting, so you want to make sure you're using a stretch stitch throughout this entire process and this just helps it to stretch along your body whenever you're putting it on. So just continue sewing your neck band in place making sure to remove your pins as you go. Once you finish sewing you want to go ahead and just finish your seam with a serger or your desired method and then you want to press the neck band away from your shirt. Now we can move on to attaching our sleeves. Go ahead and just open up your shirt with right sides facing up and grab one of your sleeves. You want to pin your sleeve to your shirt at the armhole matching the notches. So the double notch of the sleeve should match the double notch of the armhole. So go ahead and just pin your sleeve to your shirt just like you see me doing here starting at the center notch of the sleeve. So the center notch of the sleeve should match the shoulder seam. And then you want to just go ahead and pin at the underarm seam and then evenly continue pinning your sleeve to your shirt, again matching those notches. So this method of attaching the sleeve is called a flat method. So there's usually a flat method done on knit garments and then for woven garments you'll usually find a set in sleeve. Either method works just fine, but mostly for knit garments, you'll usually find a flat method instruction for inserting your sleeves. Once you've finished pinning both sleeves in place, go ahead and take your fabric to your sewing machine and just sew along with a half of an inch seam allowance. Again, making sure to remove all those pins as you go. Once you've finished sewing both sleeves in place, just go ahead and clean off your edges with a serger or your desired method. 
I'm gonna notice that your garment looks really silly. If you've never constructed a shirt before, this can look a little bit confusing, but I promise the next step is very easy. You just wanna take your fabric and you wanna place it with right sides together. So you wanna place your front to your back together and you're gonna pin at the side seams first. So I like to start pinning at the bottom of my shirt and then I go ahead and line up the underarm seam and I pin there. Next, I like to pin at the lower sleeve. Once I've pinned that, I just continue pinning along the entire side seam, making sure everything is nice and even. Once you have one side seam all pinned up, go ahead and just turn your fabric around and continue the process to the other side seam as well. Now we're going to take our fabric to our sewing machine and we're going to sew with a half of an inch seam allowance along the entire side seam. So again, this top is slightly fitted, so you want to make sure you are using a stretch stitch. I do have an entire blog post written up about sewing with knit fabrics. So if you want to learn more about sewing with knit fabrics, I'll have that blog post linked in the description bar below. So make sure you guys check that out. finish sewing both side seams in place, go ahead and just neaten up your seams with a serger or your desired method. Once you finish with that, just trim off any loose threads that you may have. And the very last step is just to hem your on a top. So just press your hem allowance up, it's usually a half of an inch, and then you want to just sew it in place, again using a stretch stitch. Once you finish your hem, you're all done with your on a top. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!